Hi, I'm Rob Taylor, the 2019 Franklin County Teacher of the Year. I'm a science teacher in RSU 73 in Jay and Livermore Falls. The biggest challenge I faced with remote learning was getting students to engage. My fellow teachers and I provided quality learning experiences for students, but only half of the students took part. Teachers overcame huge obstacles to provide remote learning in an incredibly short time frame. But it doesn't matter if students don't engage with the work. Why didn't students engage? Lack of technology or resources, difficult family situations, stress with constantly changing norms. There are many valid reasons. Back on April 8th, I read an article about one of my students riding his bike miles to sit outside a library to get internet access. I am truly compassionate for the struggles faced by students in remote learning. But high numbers of students did not engage, not because of resource access, but because the work they did did not count for anything. Students must be accountable for learning for it to be effective. Given the emergency nature of the pandemic and the shift to distance learning, my expectations for student accountability were completely removed. Teachers in my school were not even allowed to enter any kind of grade into our power school grading program. While we reached out to parents and students using systems like Remind and made weekly wellness phone call checks, parents got little feedback on whether students were actually doing things unless they reached out to their, student, their child's teacher, which few did. Personally, I had 127 students on my caseload and trying to keep contact with all of these students in a personalized way was almost impossible. A teacher shared this meme with me and it resonated. I understand that with the emergency nature of the pandemic and all of the equity issues faced by students, that accountability needed to be reduced in a major way. In fact, our school completely removed it. My feeling is that of the 50% of my students that did not engage, lack of accountability may have been equal to or greater than the lack of resources as the reason for the lack of engagement. I have students and parents now tell me, why bother if it doesn't count? My big takeaway from this experience is something that I have always thought true. The only real power we have to get kids to do things is to hold them accountable. Holding students accountable will be the greatest challenge for all teachers. We can learn to online teaching technologies. We can figure out how to get students to learn, but how do we assess them and hold them accountable in a compassionate and fair way? How do we figure out what a student has learned remotely and then evaluate it? As we go forward, issues of safety, mask wearing, student access to technology, and how we instruct students remotely will often dominate conversations. The issue of assessment and accountability may get placed on a back burner, and that would be tragic. We need to figure this out. Thank you. Hi, my name is Nicole Sauter, and I'm the 2020 Androscoggin County Teacher of the Year. Transitioning to remote learning this past spring was the biggest challenge I have ever had to face as an educator. I was definitely naive to think we could onboard from one ship to another mid-journey and think that nothing would be lost or reward in the process. There's definitely nothing more defeating than feeling like you don't have the tools necessary to meet the needs of your students. And despite all of our students in my district, having access to a laptop and internet, as well as the option for paper pencil approach, many of them were having to care for younger siblings, other parent worked outside the home, some struggled significantly getting up in the morning for a 1030 Zoom class because they didn't get to bed until at least three in the morning. Not to mention the fact that it would typically take a few seconds to troubleshoot things in a classroom setting. It was now taking a 20 minute ordeal that definitely became frustrating for students and staff alike. The remote learning gave us all the feeling that our students had essentially lost everything about school that they loved and were left with the one thing that they enjoyed the least, which was the academics. Uh, I am hopeful to have a little bit of time in the fall with my new group of students uh, in the classroom to develop relationships that are the foundation of student learning and success. Uh, now that we've been down this distant learning journey, there are a couple of things that I most definitely would do differently if we need to go back to remote learning. First, I would not continue to teach from my kitchen table. 
and I would not use Zoom as my instructional platform. Instead, I would implement a flipped classroom approach and provide students a video of the lesson, which would then allow them to access it at any time. That would take care of their needs um, for those that are struggling with getting up in the morning. Uh, educators definitely have a knack for taking an impossible situation and making it work. It is similar to a student that you struggle to figure out, and then over time, you eventually do get there. And while I do not feel that the teaching process will be better than what we were once able to provide students in a classroom before COVID restrictions, I am definitely confident in the collaborative work that we as educators do across the state as well as our um, creative and critical thinking skills that I know are going to continue to provide our students the best opportunity despite the obstacles that this pandemic is throwing at us. I thank each of you for the work that you're doing and appreciate you giving us a voice. My name is Mickey Flores and I am the 2015 Hancock County Teacher of the Year. I teach science grades 5, 6, and 7 at Deer Isle Stonington Elementary School. I've been at that school since 2010. Previously, I taught high school chemistry. The most immediate challenge I faced in the transition to remote teaching was the production of lesson plans which could be accomplished largely by the students themselves. It quickly became apparent that over half of my 50 students do not have consistent support within their homes. Also, if I was not there in person to guide them through an assignment, the results fluctuated widely, and no student should be penalized for the lack of support or the need for support. Any assessment of knowledge acquired quickly transformed to a no-harm basis. If a child attempted an assignment, he or she was scored as successful. Although a great sense of connectivity was developed between my students and I from March through June, the amount of actual learning was minimal. I would recommend the following in order to be more prepared in case there is a need to return to remote learning. I think a consistent schedule and consistent administrative expectations need to be developed. I realize we teachers all have our individual classroom styles, but I believe there should be more homogeneity between how often every class meets and for how long. The basic expectations should be more similar. Science should meet in a similar fashion to ELA math and social studies. The resulting schedule should allow for flexibility on the student's part, but not necessarily on the teacher's part. Serious attention needs to be given to learning outcomes and how and when we can deem a lesson learned, as well as how we determine when a student is ready for the next grade level. My experience taught me that virtual education is not equal education. Although my district did a stellar job of providing every student with internet access, a few students totally disappeared from my remote classroom. Although most of my students attended my half hour science Zoom sessions faithfully, some five days a week, not all had the means to pursue the learning associated with the lesson. Some were special ed and needed more re reinforcement. Some were alone in the, their homes for hours at a time, making decisions not conducive to their own schooling. The trajectory of learning has been dismantled, and I feel we are starting from a never-before-experienced baseline. My name is Rob Westerberg, and I am the 2020 York County Teacher of the Year. My biggest challenge as we transitioned to remote teaching was probably the fact that I had no control over my students' learning environment. It is a huge matter of trust that teachers and students have to develop together. That trust is developed within the parameters of an environment that the teacher sets up that allows students and teachers to interact in such a way that really gets them to engage and to feel comfortable um, learning whatever the content might be. As soon as we went remote, 
that was the sense of loss that I really felt. I could still Zoom with my students, but all of a sudden I had absolutely no control whatsoever over their learning environment. That n negatively impacted me as a teacher, but moreover, it really negatively impacted most of my students. One recommendation that I would strongly make for any schools going back to remote learning, there has to be this time around beforehand a very clear understanding of what's expected of the students and their, um, their setup at home to facilitate learning. Whether it is Zoom meetings or students watching videos or doing homework, we can't have a scenario by which students are haphazardly setting up their computers somewhere and haphazardly determining, well, maybe I'll get to it at seven o'clock tonight. We need a clear understanding of what's expected of every single student, just like we do at school. The difference is instead of their environment being in a classroom, their environment's at home, and the home has to understand that there is an obligation to set up something that accommodates the needs of both the students and their learning. The one message I would give with regard to the remote learning scenario is that content cannot possibly be taught the same way and therefore cannot be assessed the same way and learning cannot be supported the same way. And consequently, you're either going to sacrifice depth or breadth in your curriculum. And that's simply how it's going to be. Uh, we need to understand that and we need to accept that and we also need to plan ahead for what the ramifications of that might mean. And that looks certainly different by subject area or grade level, but we have to prioritize what, what it is we need our students to take away from our courses, from our classes, and, and make sure we hit the absolute essentials and understand that we can't look every, at everything as an absolute essential. Uh, we, we have to make sure that we're acknowledging learning is going to be tempered and teaching is going to be tempered and we can do a good job within that parameter but we need to know that there's going to be limitations hi i'm shauna goodall i'm the 2018 penobscot county teacher of the year a finalist for the 2019 main teacher of the year and i'm the 2019 main social studies teacher of the year I teach social studies at Orono High School, grades 9 through 12. When I think about the three questions that have been asked by the Board of Education, to me they all fall under the umbrella of equity. So I would ask that as I answer, we think about the umbrella of equity. The biggest challenge that I had, and I feel my colleagues at Orono had, um, is probably no different than other districts across the state, was how do we individualize education for students across the spectrum from those who have a gifted and talented plan, 504s, IEPs, um, English language learners, behavior plans, all those specific individualized things that we do for students, how do we do them remotely? How do we do them in distance learning? And how do we turn on a dime? But I think perhaps the biggest challenge that might not be talked about, I'm assuming people will talk about the challenge of internet access, because that was a huge issue that we were able to surmount through some creative um, acquisition of devices. Um, if it had connected to the internet, we put it in students' hands. We had a fairly high percentage of kids who had a internet device. But it's really important for them to have reliable internet that they can stream large video lectures or do complex computations on their computer, not just be able to access it over their phone. But I think the other biggest challenge is really time. Remote learning, distance learning takes a lot of time on the teacher's part to, to, to create, to organize, to reconfigure lesson plans. But also the big challenge with time is how to give feedback, how to give individualized, valuable feedback. If we were if, when we return to remote learning, um, my recommendation to fellow teachers um, is to be flexible, to um, be selective with the resources you use because it can become so overwhelming so quickly. And communicate. 
in situations like this, you cannot communicate enough with your students, with their families, with, with your colleagues. Communicate a lot. And um, if there is one thing that I would want the, the Board of Education to know about remote learning and my experiences and the experiences of my colleagues, is that while the bedrock of Maine uh, governance is in um, local control, uh, it was really um, amazing and in some cases amazingly concerning how different the remote distance options were district to district. Sometimes just going, you know, half a mile over a school district line. Um, some schools were great. I think Orono did an amazing job. We had synchronous and asynchronous classes for grades pre-K through 12. My colleagues and I did an awesome job. I have a niece who's in a different district in a different part of the state where for two weeks she didn't get anything and then all she got her packets for fourth, for third grade for the rest of the year. And that's not good for anybody either. Um, so I think the vast differences in remote learning um, is something that I think the Board of Ed really needs to look to look look at. But also I realize the challenge of that because Maine is so grounded in local control. Thank you very much. If you ever um, need anything else, please reach out. Thank you. Hi, I am Lindsay Mahoney and I'm the 2020 Kennebec County Teacher of the Year. The biggest challenge that I faced in remote teaching was trying to connect with all learners. Many of our learners were able to attend online classes to get instruction and support and check in. But there were many that were not based on their home responsibilities, their parents' schedules, reliable internet access, and let's be honest, their own personal motivation to attend. Trying to check in with all learners and make sure that they were doing okay, then focus on academics was a challenge. I would want to make sure moving forward that we had structures in place to support all learners. If we were in the classroom, not all learners would be provided the same instruction and support or required to do the same assignments. So finding a doable way to differentiate and customize instruction is essential. The one thing I would want everyone to know about my experience with remote teaching and learning is that this is not indicative of real online instruction that has been carefully thought out and planned prior to implementation. We were in an emergency situation and we all did the best we could. Worksheets and a constant stream of independent work are not what happens in a regular classroom. Finding a way to create rich, meaningful learning experiences in a digital way is what I think all teachers would prefer if we find ourselves in this situation again. This has proven that classrooms are way more than four walls and we all look forward to a time where we can safely be back learning together in person. Hello, my name is Kim Barnes and I am the 2019 Aroostook County Teacher of the Year. Maine teachers are awesome. We are dedicated to our craft, we are responsive to student needs, and we are problem solvers. When this global pandemic hit, we didn't let it interfere with our ability to connect with our students online. However, teaching online presented some challenges. In Arista County, perhaps one of the biggest challenges was connectivity. Not all students and teachers live in areas where broadband is accessible. This led to gaps in engagement and not all students could remain connected to their teachers. The other challenge that became evident was a lack of devices for younger students. I'm a middle school teacher and I've benefited from one-to-one -one computing for almost 20 years because of the MLTI program. My district has worked hard to provide one-to-one -one devices for other grade levels. However, students in our lower elementary grades lacked one-to-one -one device accessibility. They were forced to pack at work at home. My colleagues who teach in grades pre-K to two shared that they were dependent on um, parent cell phones to stay connected to their students. Working remotely also spotlighted the importance of equitable grading practices in the classroom. When teaching face-to-face, -face, the questions that students have are easily answered and confusion is pretty much rectified on the spot. A teacher always has to be thinking ahead to anticipate where the productive struggle will lie, and this became even more important in online learning. Teachers need support in this work and professional learning communities and opportunities to pursue growth in it. 
Teachers in my district also discovered that there were some students who thrived in this environment, especially the students who seemed to struggle in our regular classrooms. It opened our eyes to possibilities and potential that perhaps blended learning and alternative programs are needed for all learners, not just high school learners. This was a positive takeaway, and I'm hoping that we'll be able to pursue it um, in the years and days and weeks ahead. Resources available to schools th throughout the state of Maine are varied. Schools in Aroostook County don't have the funding available to ensure technology integrators or instructional coaches in their districts. Moving forward, all schools in Maine need equal access to these support systems so that learning in schools is more equitable across the state. Continuing and expanding the MLTI program by offering tech integrators to help teachers implement technology into their classroom practices must continue so that students in districts without integrators have the same opportunities as districts who can afford to employ integrators. Instructional coaches also provide the systemic and sustainable professional development that drives progress and fosters data-driven instructional practices that foster cultures of collaboration and responsiveness to student needs. Education can continue to be the great equalizer. All schools and students need access to broadband and devices and teachers need access to integrators and instructional coaches who can support the art of teaching. Then, all schools across the state of Maine can thrive rather than just survive in any learning environment. Thank you for your continued support of Maine schools and teachers and your willingness to listen to the voices of Maine teachers. Hello, I'm Jen France, the 2020 Somerset County Teacher of the Year and also the Early Childhood Instructor for the Somerset Career and Technical Center. When I was given these questions, I forwarded them to my colleagues so that I could gather as much information as possible to share with you today. Many of the answers could pertain to anyone's classroom and some are specific to career and technical education. When asked about the challenges we face during remote learning, all teachers responded that reliable internet access and devices to support the online teaching platforms were challenges for our students. We had many students that did not have these options. And as well as keeping students engaged and accountable for their work. Unless students had dual enrollment agreements where they needed to complete their grading and their assignments, many students stopped completing work. And as specific to career and technical education, we lost our live work piece. And many students come to us because they struggle to succeed in a traditional classroom and thrive in our labs and our shops and the ability to work with hands-on projects. And we were not able to do that remotely. Changes we'd like to see in the future, if this happens again, we'd like to see shared responsibility and accountability between students and teachers and ongoing two-way communication between them as well. We'd like to see reliable internet access and devices for all students in order to make this successful as well as professional development for both staff and students in order to be comfortable to use our online platforms and also be successful. We believe we need consistent schedules and a sense of normalcy for our kids. We were in our emergency learning situation, struggling to figure out when and where to have our Zoom classrooms and what expectations to have. We'd like to think creatively as career and technical educators to replace our live work for those students that find that piece exceptionally important. What we want you to know about our experience in remote learning is that our teachers were available to students at all times and many students did reach out to us to ask um, for things that they needed or tell us how they were doing. The connection was there. We'd like to see that continue in the future. We were also able to connect with families a little bit more. Many families joined our Zoom classroom meetings if they were around when they were happening and that was a nice piece that we saw as successful and also like to continue. We'd like you to know that career and technical education is valuable. Our SCTC program has a 95% graduation rate. And last year, out of the 153 students that were at our Skowhegan Area High School that could attend the CTE, 100 students did attend our career and technical education. And we want you to know that we see the value in supporting career and technical education moving forward. Thank you for your time today. I'm Heather Webster and I am the 2020 Lincoln County Teacher of the Year. 
The biggest challenge I faced during the spring shutdown was the loss of contact with a large percentage of my students. In our rural district, internet and cellular data are not reliable. Even calling and reaching parents and students was challenging during this time. Daily bus runs dropped off but did not pick up paper materials and only a few students returned work to school. Synchronous meets online were not a possibility for direct instruction due to the high number of absent students. So I offered office hours to check in and support my students, but I always worried about those who never showed up. Without a strong connection between home and school, students felt adrift, and I felt ghosted even though I knew it wasn't their fault. Equitable access to reliable internet connection is a vital change needed if remote learning continues, so teachers and students remain connected. This is so important and not simply for academics. Many of my students are experiencing trauma in their lives outside of school, and they rely on teachers to listen and support and even to intervene if the situation warrants. We cannot do this if we're not connected. I firmly believe that positive relationships are the single most important offering from teachers, regardless of their content area. We cannot build and maintain them if we cannot connect. Remote teaching is challenging. I know there is a faction in the general populace that believes teaching remotely just gives teachers free time, but this can't be more wrong. It takes far more time to create effective, engaging online instruction. This summer, as part of my master's program, I spent 12 to 16 hours a week creating engaging online materials for one class. Although some of those materials can be used in multiple classes, I have much more to do to have my other five classes ready for remote learning. I want to see my students. I want to instruct and guide them. I also want to stay as safe as possible for my family, including my 82-year-old immunocompromised mother. We all deserve reliable internet access to make remote learning a viable alternative for whenever we need it. I'm Debbie Carver, and I'm the 2020 Washington County Teacher of the Year. Um, the biggest challenge I faced with remote teaching was getting 100% student attendance in a setting that promotes true learning. I use Google Meets comparable to Zoom to present my math lessons. This requires sending an invitation to class to each student's email address. Some problems with that that delayed the start of class were two students who had regularly been attending classes suddenly were a no-show. They just stopped showing up. Upon contacting parents, we found they were denying their classroom invites by throwing them into their computer trash. Their attendance quickly picked up, but it did slow down the beginning of class time, you know, for everybody else, trying to figure out what was going on, where were they. Other students tried to come to math class lying on their pillow in bed. Others whose parents were at work overslept, occasionally missing class. Many kiddos came to class yawning hard, where we laughed about the fact that we can't pass our germs back and forth, but we can catch each other's yawns. Also, many students came to class unprepared, without assignments, books, or pencils. And lastly, so many students wanted to bring their pets to class, including cats, dogs, and roosters. Only a, only a small distraction and minor inconvenience. A change I am definitely making is to use Google Classroom along with Google Meets, as this will allow me to pass papers back and forth daily, allowing for immediate feedback, which is a huge deal. I also believe I need to set a chunk of time aside maybe 20 or 30 minutes per week to conference with individual, individual students addressing any issues or needs that need to be met. As a classroom teacher, one thing I learned that is so important is parental know-how and involvement. Some parents didn't know how to check to see if their kids were completing assignments, while others didn't bother to. Another problem connecting to this is students can turn an assignment in undone. While a parent might think it is done, because it's turned in, it's accounted for. At our school, we plan to Zoom with parents, offering a tutorial to outline the process, because Google Classroom is great about giving parental feedback. Thank you for listening. Enclosed is also a short video. This is Carver. I brought my rooster to class. His name is Peep.
Hi, I'm Cindy Soule, 2020 Cumberland County Teacher of the Year. When thinking about the challenges of remote learning and having had time to reflect, it just really became clear to me that the biggest challenge was the emergent nature. We got tossed into that so quickly and the skills and the ways that our, our classroom was structured in person was not easily transferable to online. So what I mean by that is the structures for deep discourse, the ways that we um, came together as a community on, on a circle and shared our learning regularly, it just didn't transfer to the, the platforms that we were using in the same way. So really just taking a step back and being able to establish those routines, build build competencies with how to use te technology and find apps that really allowed us to connect students with teachers and with each other. It was a challenge, um, but we teachers pr proved that we were very adaptable and flexible and we came together as a community and we learned and we grew from that. And I know that as we head into this year of uncertainty, we will take that knowledge that we built and we will devote that time to building a community that that can set kids up for whether we're in person, if we have to go into that emergent situation and be fully remote, really helping support kids through those adaptations that we will need to face um, this year most likely. And I think our ability to um, work together as a community of teachers to provide the best possible ways has been, has been really powerful. Um, online learning is not conducive to large amount of content. And so one thing that would be really helpful is to get, pull together the experts of literacy and math across the state and really pare down the standards so that across the state teachers know these are the things that the experts in literacy and math have identified as the most crucial. The, the ones that are going to help build those deeper level um, thinking skills critical thinking, problem solving, and communication. And then that will afford teachers the time to really focus on how we're gonna deliver our instruction through synchronous and asynchronous in ways that will support students to meeting those standards. Of course, one of the things that I've heard from parents and across our, our district-wide um, surveys was that connections. and. Te parents want to see teachers teaching in front of students and teachers want to be teaching um, more content. So as we move towards that with clear standards, um, we can really make sure that our work is not skill focused, that we are providing students an opportunity to engage in relevant real world content contexts that are gonna build that excitement, enthusiasm for learning. Um, I found that to be really powerful and I think it's something that as we move forward can really help keep that consistency of engagement and rigor and high expectations that we know are important. Thank you. Hi, I'm Christine Del Rossi, the 2018 Sagatahawk County Teacher of the Year. As you know, with the pandemic, remote teaching was a super challenge. There were so many different challenges for each teacher and each type of subject that was taught. We never knew where our students were at at any given moment or when they were going to hop online, especially if you were teaching asynchronously like I was. Um, most of my students would submit work late into the evening and often I would get up in the middle of the night and still check to see what was happening on my Google Classroom. And it was really hard for me to set boundaries when the first month started of the remote teaching. The biggest challenge for me during remote teaching and learning actually happened in June because I had to go into the old Mount Ararat High School and pack up 185 boxes of art supplies to be moved to the other building. There were a lot of big pieces of equipment that I wasn't sure what to do with either. So I was, for 16 days, during the day packing up boxes with a mask on and then coming home in the evening grading student work and giving them feedback. I was simply exhausted and I was working twice as hard as I was in March. If I could go back in time like Michael J. Fox and do this again and do it the right way, I would put together boxes of materials for my students 
And I'm thinking that might be what will work well for teaching art next year because I don't have time to disinfect things in between. Uh, teaching photography, I'm a bit worried about how many cameras I have and student accessibility to that. Uh, my universal wish would be really good technology support and film making tools. If we do have to teach remotely, it was really challenging to do my drawing demos with my iPhone in one hand and a pencil in the other. I also teach advanced placement two-dimensional art, and I had five students that were submitting AP portfolios that had some of their work still at school. So the fact that I could go into the building while I was packing and message them and say, hey, I'm going to leave your portfolio by the door. Here's the secret password. Well, there was no secret password, but it felt that way. Um, that was actually uh, one of those things that I was fortunate to be able to get their work to them. And I'm proud to say that all of my AP students passed with flying colors. And uh, I'm very proud of the work that they did. And um, yeah, it was just very difficult. We did online critiques and gave each other feedback. And it was amazing the work that they produced. Beautiful, beautiful work. The big question that everyone is asking me, friends, parents of students, students, my family, what do you think is going to happen next year? Well, every year is sort of like that as a teacher. And I feel like I've been teaching for long enough that I do have some tricks in my pocket. But it would be really good for me to have all those tricks aligned because I don't know what's going to happen. I don't think any of us do. I am working currently on the DOE project for asynchronous learning, and I'm meeting some wonderful uh, teachers across the state that teach all kinds of different topics, and I'm really proud of the work that we're doing. Um, I'm super hopeful for next year, and I miss all my students, and I hope that we all can come together and make the best decisions for everyone. Good afternoon. My name is Allison Babbrot and I am the 2020 Knox County Teacher of the Year. My biggest daily challenge with remote teaching was connecting with and supporting struggling students in real time. Despite creating three to four differentiated videos of each lesson to meet the varying needs and abilities of all of my students, for my struggling students, a question or a clarification often ended in a loss of learning. In my experience, if a struggling student had a question or was confused, the back and forth of trying to connect was sometimes insurmountable. My seven-year-old students would first have to let me know they had a question by typing it onto the assignment or navigating the internet to get to their email. Even if I responded to their request for help within minutes, which wasn't always possible, they had often left their computers and wouldn't respond back to my response to them for hours. As a result, appeals for support usually ended in one of two ways, the student giving up or forgetting their question by the time we connected on Zoom. Real learning was lost in these moments and difficult concepts were often left by the wayside for many of my students, widening the learning gap. Should we need to return to remote learning this year, I feel it is vital that every single student has stable internet access and a user-friendly device. On top of that, I believe assignments and one-on-one -on -one Zoom meetings with me, their teacher, need to be mandatory and not optional. Everything was so new and in such transition in the spring, and there were so many adjustments to be had, so as a school, we were incredibly flexible with academic expectations and attendance requirements. As a result, I lost complete touch with two of my students despite valiant efforts on behalf of my school. Six of my students disengaged almost completely. They checked in every now and then to say hello, but did not complete any assignments or attend any Zoom meetings. And the remaining 12 of my students, about half experienced extreme frustration and difficulty in engaging. I think that the most important thing to keep in mind when we think about remote learning is that every student, every teacher, and every class experiences remote learning differently. Some students thrive and some students meet huge challenges. Some students attend every single lesson and complete every single assignment and some students disappear. We all know that there is no one size fits all in a physical classroom and that has never been more true 
than during remote learning.